Hi there, we are going to talk about balancing reactions and determining reaction type in today's quick video. So balancing chemical equations needs to be done in order to follow the law of conservation of mass or law of conservation of matter, we call it both ways in our classroom. Um, and to do that, we need to make sure that the number and type of atoms on both sides of our arrow happen to be the same. We can do that using coefficients. We never want to change the subscripts on formulas. If we're changing the subscripts on formulas, we're changing the identity of that substance, which is not okay to do. So only the numbers in front called coefficients. And in general, um, some patterns that are helpful for balancing reactions would be to try to do one element at a time. If we start out with sodium on the left, you're going to go and look at sodium on the right or vice versa. Um, but you don't want to do sodium and then calcium without finishing up sodium first. As far as this goes, this, this third point seems to kind of contradict number two. What that's saying is that if I have a group of atoms like NO3 nitrate on the left side of my arrow and then also on the right side, I can balance it as a group. So since there's a subscript two right here, I would need to put a two in front of this whole substance to balance out my nitrates. Uh, elements you want to save for last, specifically hydrogen and oxygen. Those are, whoops, those are easiest to balance by themselves because they have the least going on. Um, reduce your coefficients when you're working on these and then let me see if I can get rid of this oops expand that get rid of the tool I can't get rid of that um, and then you can always do an atom inventory which would mean you kind of make it a t-table for the reactants on the left and products on the right keeping track of each element but uh, this is something that you'd want to move away from as you become more skilled so I have some example problems to show you. That's the easiest way to get good at balancing reactions is to see problems and then just practice. This is kind of more artistic than algorithmic, if you will. So in this first chemical equation, in general, I, just, I tried to start out with the most difficult looking formula, and that would be this one because there's two different elements. So if I look at my sodium, I'm gonna start on the left um, of the formula, reading left to right, just like you would reading a book. Um, there's one sodium here, and there's one sodium here, so I don't need to do anything with this. Then my chlorine, there's one chlorine here, but there's two chlorines here. So I'll need to go back and add a coefficient 2 in front of my sodium chloride. That 2, though, affects sodium, so now I have two sodiums. I need two sodiums over here. So now that's a balanced chemical equation using the coefficients. Sometimes you have worksheets that have blanks that you fill in. You wouldn't put anything here. If you had to, you'd put the number one. That's an imaginary one, but we don't need to include that and try to avoid including ones um, as you work through these. My second example here, I'm gonna look for my most difficult looking formula. That's in a general practice. Find your difficult formula, start there. This formula is the most complicated just because of the parentheses. It looks visually difficult. If I start going left to right through that formula, one copper, one copper, we're balanced. And then here's where I have that group of atoms. This is nitrate, and this is nitrate. That's part of why we learned our ions was so that we could recognize um, a group of ions if we see them. So I have nitrate right here, and I have nitrate over here, but there's two copies of nitrate. There's two of everything inside the parentheses. So two copies of nitrate, which means I need to have two copies on the left-hand side, and I do that with a coefficient 2. And then I have two silvers, so I need two silvers right here as well. Finally, this last problem, again, I'm going to look for my most difficult looking formula. That would be the first one. I have two irons because I'm going to work left to right through this formula. I need to have two irons right here then. Going back and finishing this formula, that's something I like to try to do. I have three oxygens right here, but then if I quickly scan, I have oxygen here as well. So that makes this a little bit more complicated. Um, in general, three and, and one would make four, so I probably have to multiply this by two. And then what that's going to do is that's going to give me um, two, two carbons, and I have two carbons right here. So that doesn't balance out. So then I need to rethink what I have going on here. So if I have this two in front of my carbon monoxide, um, I do have balanced carbons, but the issue is that I have three oxygens and two oxygens, which gives me five. 
and over here I only have four. So that doesn't make sense. And what I have going on here is I have an odd number on this side and I have an odd number, an even number on this side. So I need to make my odd number even. So that's going to be uh, one way I can do that. I have three here. I don't want to change this, but I do have uh, two here and I can change this. And um, the reason I don't want to change this guy is because I already balanced my irons. So I can try to change this and say, well, what if I do one more oxygen to make this even if I change this to a three? So now I have three carbons and I've ch changed this to a three. I now have three carbons and I have six oxygens. Three and three make six, so that's going to be balanced. So this one isn't as intuitive as some of the other ones that we do, and um, that's because you have oxygen in two different locations. Those two different locations make it more difficult to balance, and sometimes you have to be thinking, how can I make this, um, this odd number turn into an even? Because that's really the only way we can balance the equations. You can't multiply by a coefficient and make an odd number, or at least a whole number coefficient. So moving forward, um, the next part of our discussion is going to be hints for determining reaction type. And this is important because in the whole scheme of things, we're going to be looking at one or two or three reactants and we're going to decide what kind of reaction is going on here. And you need to be able to do that just from what's on the left side of the arrow. So there's some patterns that we can use. And I put these uh, questions that you're going to basically ask yourself in an order that I think is easiest to observe based on um, complexity of what's going on inside these reactions. So the first question I have you ask is, is there one reactant that's really easy to see? Because you won't see a plus sign. And if that's the case, it's going to be decomp. If you can't say yes to that question, you move on to your second question, and you're looking for oxygen gas, uh, typically with a carbon and hydrogen containing compound, such as CH4. If you see that, that's going to be combustion. If you don't see that, you ask yourself a third question. Is there only one reactant? And then the other um, reactant happens to be ionic. And if that's the case, it's going to be single replacement. It's worth noting for question two and three, it doesn't have to be O2 plus CH. It could be CH plus O2. And for number three, it could be an ionic compound plus an element. If you've said no to the previous three questions on the last slide, you go ahead and ask yourself about question four. Are both my re reactants ionic? If yes, that's going to be a double replacement reaction. And then finally, are both of my reactants elements? That's going to be synthesis. Now I save number five for last because if you went through those first four questions and you've said no, and you get to question number five, um, and you still say no, then you're at number six. And that means that you have a special reaction based on special reaction patterns that, that we have in our class. Um, and then you, you would use your brown special reaction sheet to help you with that. Synthesis is the most common type of special reaction pattern that we have that you can't ID um, just from being one reactant, which would be decomp. So I leave synthesis for number five because if it's not a synthesis normal reaction, it's likely going to be a synthesis special reaction. So uh, to use your brown sheet, you want to name each compound and then find which of the special reaction patterns matches based on the names of the compound. We'll talk about that in a different uh, a different discussion. So um, after going through that video, I hope that helps you understand how to balance chemical equations and then to look at the reactants to determine what kind of reaction happens to be occurring. Thanks. Have a good day.